Hello again everybody, this is Cenex, and this is going to be an episode of Video Sketchbook. So with this video sketchbook, I'm just going to be doing a reference painting for the most part. Um, I had been doing a lot of reference painting on stream a couple weeks ago, and I just thought it would be fun to go offline and actually record one of them so I could put it on YouTube and everything. Uh, so this is a picture, you can see it in the top left corner, that I took or I took with my friends at Balboa Island, uh, which is just a little kind of city area by the beach um, in Southern California. Uh, so once again, I think I mentioned it before, but it's always a good idea to go out and take your own pictures, um, not only for you know copyright reasons, but it's also a lot of fun. Um, and it gives you a nice little resource of uh, photos to look at at future times and mess with um, that are you know unique to you. Uh, so this was in Balboa Island, and you can see I started off the reference painting uh, like I do most times, working from back to front. So the really easiest thing to do to start out with was, well, of course, you put the horizon line. That's the very first thing. That just gives you a point of reference for everything else. Um, and it's, you know, a good idea to have that there, uh, especially in the instance of this photo, because it's it's very clear looking at it that it's it's mainly just focused on that one vanishing point and pretty much all the stuff that I'm going to be drawing in it is going to be using that single vanishing point. You know, there's obviously, it's real world, so there's, you know, multiple vanishing points and everything, but that's the main one that I'm only caring about uh, for this reference. Um, so anyway, you can see I started with the horizon line. I did a quick wash of the background. Uh, you can see in the photo, this background is absolutely about as simple as a sky background can be. There's no clouds, just a beautiful blue day. So obviously there's a slight gradient as you look off into the distance. Um, you can see at the very top, you get those nice dark blues, like you're looking through the, the thinnest part of the atmosphere as you're looking up into space. It's really dark blues. Uh, but then you look farther and farther out into the distance, closer to the horizon, and things get a lot more subdued. They get a lot more gray. You're looking through all that haze, all that atmosphere. Uh, the blues just fade out into something, uh, yeah, once again, more light, more gray. Um, but uh, back to the, what I'm actually doing currently in the video. Um, you can see my main little horizon points. Uh, why am I saying horizon point? Uh, my main little vanishing point there. I have a couple little lines coming out, which are the like sidewalk, um, the ends of the street there on both sides. And they meet in the vanishing point. Uh, but I'm just kind of going around and filling out the background stuff. I'm not worrying about the cars yet. I just want to establish all those little houses and uh, trees and foliage that are just throughout the scene. Um, so this this kind of house I'm doing on the right, it gave me a little bit of trouble just because it's really has a strong uh, perspective on it. And you know, doing those like angled shapes in perspective are a little more complicated than just doing basic blocks and everything. But once again, it's it's about as basic as it can be. Um, it's it's probably the next step up from doing uh, just a basic cube in perspective is doing doing these angles on the cube. Uh, so I don't know why I was messing up with that so much, but it just looked weird to me. Uh, so you can see, I even like shrunk things down. Sometimes it's nice to kind of blur the eyes a little bit, work really small, uh, come back, make sure things are looking good from the tiniest of viewpoints. Because um, if things are work, are th <laughs> blah, blah, blah. if things are looking good uh, when they when they're that small, then they're definitely going to be looking good when you blow things up. So I guess it's kind of important to note that I'm pretty much using the photo reference um, at that size. I'm not looking at a bigger picture. I'm looking at that one in the top left, and this is um, this is recorded at 100% size. So what you're seeing, if you're viewing this at like 720p, uh, that's what I record at is 1280 by 720. So that's what the actual size is. Uh, so it's a tiny little photo I got pushed pushed up into the corner and I can't actually see a lot of the details that are going on. Uh, certain times I'm guessing them like with the car uh, I put the little badge there and uh, under the taillight because I'm pretty sure that might be like a Honda Odyssey or something. Um, but yeah for a lot of these details I'm just kind of guessing like on the left side especially with all those houses I couldn't really tell what's going on above the van. Um, if I look at the photo in full resolution, I can tell there's like a flag there. There's a lot of actual stuff that I couldn't even see 
um, in this view. Um, yeah, sorry, my throat's getting dry now. Uh, but yeah, it, that's not important. I just want to be able to focus on those big blocky shapes. So that's why it's kind of interesting. I don't know if it's if it's the most productive way to do things, but it's certainly one way to do things is to use a really tiny kind of look at a photo. Uh, to say you really can just focus on blocks of color, blocks of blocks of values. Um, so you can see I'm doing this car, and this also helped remind me of a lot of things uh, I talked about when we did the shiny mech video, or I guess yeah, I think that was called the the shiny mech, another video sketchbook, and that is how important these reflections are on metal surfaces. So if you look at the van, uh, you can see it's pretty much reflecting the ground exactly, especially on the left side of that, or I should, man, I cannot speak right now. On the right side of the van there, you can see there's pretty much a sidewalk, a street, and then some foliage. You can see the skyline at the top, and it's basically just mirroring what you would be seeing if you looked over there, the way the van is pointed. Um, so yeah, that's kind of something to think about anytime you're doing cars and stuff. And I've wanted to do more cars because uh, they're a lot of fun, I think. I see people drawing cars a lot uh, that do industrial design work, and they just always look so nice and uh, interesting and fun. Man, I really didn't plan out this commentary too well, did I? Um, there's a couple things that I made, I don't know, mistakes on or that I probably should have done differently. Uh, for instance, that big tree on the left there, I probably should have started it with a really darker tone than I did. I started it with a kind of light green, uh, but I really should have uh, filled it in with a really dark, probably the darkest uh, value that you can see on the tree, and then come back in over on top of it with the lighter greens and the, those light brown colors and all the, all the more lighter things. Uh, so, so little touches like that, you usually want to work from dark to light, uh, once again, from back to front, dark to light. Uh, that's our, those are kind of the ways I like to do things. I'm not sure if that's a universal standard. I don't think it is, but it's it's usually helpful uh, just to make things look better. So I'm working on these little tiny cars um, that are off in the distance. And this is probably the one time where looking at this little photo really kind of threw me off because I knew they had to look uh, like cars, but I couldn't even see any of the details as to what the cars really looked like. Uh, so those cars are kind of ugly. I'll be the first to say that. They they look pretty bad, especially that first kind of goldish looking one. Um, I wasn't happy with that one at all. Uh, but let's see, what other things that I want to talk about? Oh yeah, the lighting in this uh, image is pretty much straight from the top. As far as I could tell, all the shadows under the cars are pretty much directly under them. Uh, so it's very basic in that sense. Uh, but if anything, it looks like uh, it's coming more from behind me. Um, so that's why you can see it on some of the houses where the lightest side is that side that's facing camera um, and the darker stuff, or I should say the slightly more blue, slightly more subdued colors are, are facing uh, opposite of us. Opposite? No, perpendicular to us. That's a better word. Uh, so you can see I was doing this car on the right side here, and I thought it just looked horrible as I was starting. Um, and a lot of times things do just look horrible when you start them out. There's no good way to make it look like a good car right away. Uh, you just draw this like flat blue, and it's like, this does not look like a car at all. It kind of looks like the shape of a car, but it just doesn't fit the scene at all. Uh, but once again, like with this shiny mech uh, video I did, uh, you just got to be patient with it. You just got to be like, okay, trust yourself that it'll eventually start looking good. And uh, once you start doing all of the reflections, you can see the nice warm street color, that kind of light brownish color reflected in the side of the car. And uh, once you start filling out all those different colors and reflections, it suddenly starts to look okay. Uh, what started out with a pretty ugly shape, now it's slowly building into a car that looks I don't know, actually realistic. So uh, that's that's just something to always remember when you're working on the stuff. Even if it looks bad at first, uh, just trust in yourself that it'll eventually start to look good the longer you work on it. Uh, don't get frustrated, because I know it can be frustrating if you're trying to do something and it looks really bad right, like right away, right from the start, it doesn't look good. 
uh, but stick with it. Uh, keep trying to identify why it doesn't look good and just make little changes here and there until it does start to look good. Because uh, that's really what being an artist is all about. Um, it's it's not so much uh, other stuff. It's a, it's a lot of just recognition. I can recognize what's wrong with something. I can fix it. Doesn't matter how shaky your hand is or how kind of uh, messy you are with your tools. As long as you can keep recognizing what's wrong with something, you can keep fixing it. Even if it's a shaky line, you can keep going back over it until you, it looks right. Uh, so you can see doing these little windows on the houses and everything. Um, I really didn't like this house either, uh, the balcony and everything. It just it felt really awkward while I was doing it. But you know, once again, once it's done, it looks it manages to look okay somehow. Uh, so just believe in the method, believe in what you're doing, and uh, it should work out okay. Uh, so the other thing I should note, I completely forgot, is I'm not color picking from the photo uh, whatsoever. And I feel like that's a very important thing uh, to do when you're working photo reference. Because you want to get comfortable with your tools. Um, you want to improve your observational skills. You want to get better at using the color picker. And, you know, if you just use the eyedropper and quickly... Uh, I guess it's called a, I don't know what they call it, the pipette. Uh, but if you just use the, the eye dropper and uh, get your colors like that, it doesn't really train you about what you're looking at and uh, how to use your, your color wheel to quickly kind of figure out what a color is and uh, just improves your observational skills as well. It makes you think about, okay, this is getting warmer because you see it on your color well, you have to move things warmer, you have to up the values, you have to lower the values, you up the saturation. Uh, and you, you know, it makes you just think about those things a lot more. And uh, that's why we do studies so we can kind of observe things and study them. And <laughs> it kind of uh, just helps us out anytime we go back to doing things that aren't studies, it makes us a little more wiser. Um, cause I guess, I guess observation is the key thing to be a good artist. You just have to be very observant of everything around you. Um, and that will make you better. So anyway, I'm still just noodling away at these cars cause once again, I just can't see them in the big picture up there. I'm sorry, the little picture. And I just can't see what the big picture is going to look like with these cars. Um, they're just so blurry to me. Uh, but I probably should have worked with that more. I probably should have just been, okay, they're blurry, but that's okay. Just focus on the shapes you do see. Everything should be simplified into just basic shapes, values, colors. Uh, but I think that's about it for the actual photo portion of things. And then, you know, you have this nice little photo reference that you've painted. And I just like to go back in and mess around and see if I could... Uh, put some crazy sci-fi stuff in there just for fun. So I was like, oh, maybe there's some giant sci-fi ships in the top. Maybe there's some mechs hiding around uh, in the forest. Uh, but I forgot to mention the brush I used with this uh, piece. It wasn't my normal thick and thin. It wasn't scratch more tool. It was actually an impressionist style brush, uh, but it had the features. I guess it's the the depth kind of function of the impressionist brush it had it turned down a ton uh, so there's pretty much none of that like uh, the 3d effect that you get with the impressionist brushes uh, you can kind of just turn it off uh, but the brush itself just kind of has a very square and uh, kind of nice kind of traditional feel to it when you're using it not that i would know much about traditional stuff uh, so because it's so square and it has this really nice blocky feel to it, I thought it would just be fun to maybe try doing these little space invaders because it just it fits the blockiness of the brush so well. It just makes it nice and easy to kind of make these little things. Uh, so what I wanted to do was make it look like uh, these little space invaders were actually invading uh, our, our real world. Uh, so here we go. I drew one from a very, very kind of basic and boring perspective uh, just kind of head on and there's a little bit of three dimension like underneath you can see some of the bottom stuff uh, but then I thought I would try some other ones uh, there's the other types of space invaders I kind of drew one off in the distance there but I was like mm, that looks kind of boring doesn't it 
thought maybe I'd draw like a row of them, like they go in the actual game, you know, like a row of them coming down. Uh, but once again, that just, I don't know, it, it didn't, it was kind of ruining the piece. Um, and not to say that making Space Invaders was making it any better to start with, uh, but it just was taking away from the dimension too much. So now what I realized was, okay, I got to go in and make them actually in 3D space. So this was kind of a quick mental exercise, um, just kind of quickly testing the brain. And that's a good idea of a project to do as well, or I should say study, is just to draw something really basic like this uh, space invader and then try to draw them in different perspectives. Uh, so I drew one at a slightly skewed perspective. He's looking off to the left. And then I got rid of that other one because he was no fun. And uh, I'm going to do another one on the other side real fast. And this one's going to be looking off to the right um, at an even steeper perspective. So you can see I'm just kind of focusing really quickly. I'm building it out in my brain more than anything. I'm not really using much uh, guidance, but I'm just kind of piecing it together piece by piece in my brain. And uh, that's that's just a useful thing to practice, being able to move things in 3D space, think about how they would look at different angles. Uh, so there we go. I have three little space invaders. Um, I'm not going to say anything that about the composition, because the composition of adding these three little guys around the top like this is it's pretty bad. Um, it's it's definitely I didn't make this with like healthy composition in mind. Uh, you can see your eye kind of just travels around the top of the page and around the bottom. It's just kind of like a circular composition for the most part. I did try to add a couple things. Uh, you can see maybe some of the havoc they've caused. I added this nice little smokiness, like they've started some fires, and the uh, the one there in the center is dropping his bomb thing, uh, which is you know, hilariously enough, just like a giant rectangle pixel thing. Uh, but then I thought, okay, maybe the maybe the good old Americans are fighting back, so this guy is getting blown up. Maybe he got hit by a missile or something. <laughs> I feel really stupid talking about this. Um, so yeah, there's like some little uh, some little jet lines in the background, some chemtrails, if you will, if you want to be a conspiracy theorist. Uh, just kind of going along like there's jet jets traveling in the background to to get to these space invaders and one guy fired a missile and it blew up one. So I did on separate layers so you can see the little missile hit him and then the little car alarm goes off. <laughs> oh man, I am it is way too late and I am I am partially sick right now, so that's why I'm kind of delirious. Uh, but there is the final piece. I guess I'll put it on DeviantArt just for fun. I'm sure there is a ton of stuff I forgot to talk about, but hopefully, you know, watching it happen is gives you enough ideas of how you can process your own photo reference practice and uh, what things you might want to look out for. Uh, so I changed the colors a bit. You know, once again, it doesn't really matter. It looks okay with both colors. I just felt like making it warmer for whatever reason. Uh, but I think that's about it. Uh, so thank you for watching. It was fun, interesting. It was, it was something. Um, so yeah.